Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. .1. In this video we are going to look at SANE N1 Improvement Option Number 2. Option number one was if Sergei Korolev had been given a proper budget, been able to uh, build better tanks and hopefully fund better engines, at least the NK-33 and NK-43 variants of the engines they was getting from Kuznetsov Bureau. And in this case, we are going to be going with the Glushko option. Basically, if Valentin Glushko had taken over the N1 project or gotten his way with Ser Sergei Korolev in the first place, what might have occurred? And so we're not going to change the structure of the first stage this time. We are going to change the engines. Instead of having 30 of these, we are going to replace them with the RD-270 which is a much larger hypergolic fueled engine burning UDMH NTO. So that's what I wanted the, the what you call it, Bobcat Soviet engine pack for because it has this engine and I don't know if I have the engine otherwise. But very powerful engine, it's the equivalent of about four of the NK engines so we only need about 15, oh sorry not 15, uh, really eight or so of them on here, maybe even less. Uh, they're nearly F1 level thrust in a single chamber and more efficient the, than the N1, uh, sorry, the, than the F1. But we've got this stage and technically it the fuel mixture for UDMH and NTO by volume is not Uh, not the same as for kerosene and liquid oxygen. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and assume that they're going to do minimal changes here. So they're going to underutilize the liquid oxygen volume. So we're going to put um, a 607,516 liters of UDMH to use the same volume of that tank. And let me jot that down. And let me see what that gets us in terms of the nitrogen tetroxide equivalent. Now, this is not the best thing to do, but we'll see what it comes up with. I mean, we're going to assume that Glushko was just given this tank, and but he had the RD-270 magically. I'm not entirely sure he would have had that ready, but uh, if, if we assume that, could he have? what could he have done with it putting those onto this? So it'll only be using 690,595.8 liters of the liquid oxygen tank. So that's not much. So we're going to just remove these. And on the, I'm just going to manually put in the amounts for the UDMH which is going to be 607 like that, whoops, and then the NTO. So we're utilizing even less than before, which is technically bad, but still the stage has quite a lot of fuel in. Um, I think we'll just use the uh, outside nodes. Ah, uh, we won't use nodes at all. There's it, they surface attach. We'll have eight way symmetry. And we'll use eight of them. Let's see how that works out for us. Well, it doesn't have much burn time, but look at that thrust to weight ratio. Figure out some way. Maybe they'd have to change the tanks. I don't think. Well, I don't know. With that thrust to weight ratio, it's possible. I mean, we're talking about how much delta V do we have on these three stages? And that's, uh, it might be wrong because of the hot staging. So 3352 plus 3122 plus 2942. 9416, so it's pretty close. And with that really high thrust-to-weight ratio, it might be able to do it. So it'll be lighter than the N1 rocket by, by a fair amount. And that first stage is not going to last very long. But let's try it. So I'm going to call this the N1G, G for Glushko. 
So again, this is assuming that the liquid oxygen tank is only filled up to 70% capacity and is filled up with nitrogen tetroxide. And that would be the amount to balance out the uh, UDMH. So we will keep an eye to make sure that I got the math right and that we don't have a surplus of one of those. Um, we should probably just pin this, I think, to make sure about that. And so, uh, ignition. The hope here, of course, is that with only eight engines, the stage won't rip itself apart, and hopefully they'll be more reliable engines, because Lushko was a very good engine designer. We want to go to the higher inclination. I think 65 worked better. We need to make use of our high thrust to weight ratio, though, so we, need to, we should have started turning earlier. Oh, I didn't put the grid fins out. Obviously, the entire bottom of this would have to be reconfigured for these eight engines, but it'd be simplified, so that's good. I'm really pushing it here. We really need to be much shallower than we are right now. I don't know if they throttle. They don't. <laughs> these engines do not throttle, so we're gonna have to deal with high g-forces for a large part of the flight. We might consider shutting off two of them, or four of them. Okay, hot staging. And separation. Yeah, it was pretty much exact. I think we had nine units of UDMH left or something. Well, let's see if it gets to orbit. Okay, we are in space, and looking good so far. We're even getting to the right inclination this time. Okay, hot staging. A little bit late on that. And separation. I'll jettison the launch escape system, I think. But again, not the fairings. Unfortunately, that doesn't give me a read on the Delta V still. Um, 3,200. We should have enough. We should have enough for orbit. In theory, this could have been done. Actually, the first stage would have been lighter without all the extra plumbing. I don't know how well tested the RD-270 was at the time, or or um, whether or not it would get the performance that it supposedly gets. Okay, we're basically at the right inclination now. I was trying for 51.4, so I'm just gonna stick to that. Might be 51.6 or something, but it's not a big deal. Okay, well, it's close as usual, but... It works. Not with a whole lot of margin, but it works. Uh, I guess we could have had a better launch profile, especially with the, the tremendous thrust-to-weight ratio we could have turned faster, but um, overall... It is feasible, and of course if we add improved tanks that are better suited to the fuel ratio of the fuels, the or the propellants, the UDMH and NTO, that would be even better. But otherwise we managed to get to orbit, and I'll leave it there. So next time I'll present the insane option to improve the N1, uh, don't try this at home kind of option. Uh, but I'll leave you to guess what that might be. So this will be a short video, but we've I've demonstrated what I wanted to demonstrate. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.